welcome to another video on the Coach Dev Academy channel. My name is Bart, and today I'm going to be taking you for a lap guide around Road Atlanta in the FIF 4 car. Here's the hot lap. All right, we're heading down the hill now uh, and onto the, the main straight up road, Atlanta. Pretty cool track, a bit different in the uh, F4 car. Um, it's a bit tricky, I'd say, because of a lot of the curb usage and things like that compared to running a prototype or a GT car. And I'm sure most people in iRacing have done a bit of road Atlanta because of the Petit Le Mans, but also just because it's one of those tracks you just see in the reputation like every single uh, season, pretty much like a Sebring or something like that. Um, but in the F4 car, very, very tricky and a lot about curb striking and stuff, which we'll get to in a second, with very few actual corners, let's say, that make a big difference. Anyway, getting to our first corner, which very much is a corner, turn one. Um, very fast uphill right-hander. First thing you can do is we need to try and open up this entry, cut the grass here on the left. Um, I know it looks illegal. You don't get an off-track. Um, I'm playing with fire here, but you, if I'm probably a tire width further left, again, off track, but you can run it as long as the middle of the car is kind of in, inside the white line. So the middle of the halo is on the white line here. You can get away without getting off track. You have to run on the grass if you're going to use this little bit of tarmac to open up because if I turn kind of after it and then try and do that at whatever, what, what are we going, 220 Ks, it's not happening. It just, it just isn't happening. So my advice is definitely cut the grass like this so you can just watch my approach again so move over to the left like this about 100 meter board you're going to be moving over onto the grass and then that allows you to get a bit more on the entry and trust me it is worth it it is worth a bit of entry but you shouldn't be breaking on the grass or turning on the grass you're just kind of running over it yeah it's not it shouldn't be crazy risky the only thing you should be risking is the occasional off track cool so with that in mind you can see i'm turning in flat out turning in uh, just before the end of this tarmac bit here, braking kind of at the end of this bit of runoff on the left, facing that um, motor board, and kind of got the whole track width here to use at this point, which is the whole reason we were uh, cutting across the grass. There's give us this better angle of attack on the entry. All right, so uphill. So it's important to preserve our momentum. Okay, so if we slow the car down, we're not going to be able to get it. Oh, slow the car down too much. We're not going to be able to get the speed back up again. And uh, it's a low-powered car. And being low-powered, it's not like 500 horsepower where I can just get on the throttle early and it drives me up the hill. No, it's more important to roll speed, yet carry speed, rather than to get on the throttle early because it just bogs up the hill, especially in uh, fifth gear. It, it, you just have no torque. And actually, in fifth, if you don't carry enough speed, you just, you're, you just are very, very slow. You just bog massively. So it's all about how much speed I can roll up the hill here and then also our positioning to the next section, which we'll get to in a moment. Okay. So getting across here to the left, brake nice and soft. Carry the speed in, minimal steering. Get it off. Pretty much you either want to um, strike the inside curb. It does bottom out in this compression a little bit, especially when you take the curb. But it doesn't upset the car too much, and it's better than being wider. I tried being wider and avoiding the, the bump. It's, it, it's just worse. 
So um, we're just going to have to go through and take the bump, even if it upsets the car a little bit. Uh, fifth gear, how soft can you brake? How much speed can you carry? You see, I have a late downshift here. And again, that's partly because if I downshift early, I'm taking, I'm using that engine braking earlier in the corner and I'm taking off a lot of speed. So I'm just trying to preserve the momentum up the hill, but also get into this nice position here or on the curb, um, using all the camber, able to be up throttle. Car should run out. You can run out up to the exit curb. If you touch that exit curb, it's probably not good. You're probably too loaded, even if you can keep it on the track. It's probably too aggressive, and you're going to have to work too hard to get it back. And actually, you can lose quite a bit of time, as I've said before, with this car on some lap, guys, just scrubbing the wheel, just having too much lock on, even though you're flat out. But you're not really accelerating anywhere. So generally, for me, a good marker, um, carrying speed and getting on throttle like, in this compression is much more important for me. Um, but a good marker is being inside, oh, sorry, uh, outside this black line here, this strip of tarmac. Um, don't worry about being all the way to the left. You can be a little bit further left than this, but you don't need to be all the way over there. All right, so straight away working to get the car right. Now you can see I don't swerve. I don't, I don't swerve over here because there's no point with the way the hill shaped. If I drive over here and then left, I just make this left hander harder for me because I'm going to go over the crest and the car's going to push over to the right-hand side of the track. But this is why it's important not to run out too wide because if you run out wide, you're kind of in a position where just because of the angle of the corner and the amount of time we have, the track comes back towards us here, you make this left kink so tight. You don't realize it unless you do quite a few laps and you're on the limit, but you make it so much harder to prepare the car for uh, the second, third corner, which is the most important corner on the track in terms of lap time, pretty much, maybe with the last chicane. So you'd rather compromise turn one by half a tenth for sure and gain like a tenth, tenth and a half in this next bit coming up. So with that in mind, positioning wise, this is a really good reference. This split in the road, this, um, uh, what would it be? It'd be a gap between two strips of tarmac. Um, so make sure you're here. And you can see I go over the hill, kind of when I can see this little blue um, Marshall's hut, turn left, and get the car on this curb. Again, you can get the car on the curb nice and early. Try not to hit the, or get, get in line with the curb before it starts, because you go over this like bump, um, which we have with the curb later on as well. But if, you, if you're positioning the car on the left before you hit the curb, when you hit the curb, it kind of goes up. We generally want to hit that uh, and we want to be not in line with the curb going this way at the start but more in line with it here towards the end you see the curb actually turns so with that in mind you can see i try and get this angle here it's all about preparing this next right hander okay uh i try and get this angle here and to do that even if you're out of position a bit because you got forced a bit wide at turn one lift through here just just lift a bit not fully off the throttle but just some you don't have to hold 100%. Being a hero here is not going to gain you tons of time. What's going to gain you time is carrying speed through this next right hander. So if you can position the car better, it's worth it, okay? So positioning the car here, you see I, I kind of lift out the throttle. I don't, I don't just like go straight onto the brake. I'm just trying to bring the car over to the left without, I don't need to brake at this point. Just bring the car over to the left. Then I start to brake. Now I've got the car in line with the end of the curb, as wide as possible entry for this next right hander. Braking shouldn't be very hard. You can see it's like 30%, something like that, brake pressure. Uh, that's because if you brake hard here, you'll just lock up and kill the speed. Very careful with that on this track. A lot of braking on curbs and stuff, and you have to just modulate that brake pressure, avoid locking up and sliding the tire. Quite often when you understeer or s snap the rear on the exit, or go ahead, uh, this. So, so the front starts sliding, the car doesn't turn in, and then it snaps after that. It's quite often because of the braking, so watch for that. Uh, soft brake on the way in. Carry in fifth gear. So like turn one, if you're in four, uh, if you need to take fourth, okay, sure. I, I get that, especially for this corner. Maybe you need to take fourth to start with. But if you're taking in fourth, you're not carrying enough speed. You're not carrying enough speed. So you need to, if you want to be really quick, you've got to take it in fifth. Um, and in terms of track limits, it's the middle of the car. This is my understanding, the middle of the car on this edge of the curb, the inside edge of the curb. So I'm just about safe here. In fact, normally you should be safe. If you turn late off that entry curb, you should always be safe with the F4 because you can't really get over this curve because look how big it is. It's firing the car up on two wheels. So it's not really going to be able to just clobber the curve like a GT car and go that way. Um, but we're trying to get that angle to be facing towards the right as much as possible through here. All right, so fire the car onto the curb as much speed as possible. It's all about how much speed can I carry and get the car um, on the curb pretty much with my left tires just on the road and my rest of the car up on the curb. Pick up some throttle here. This is why fifth is good because that bump, that... Um, curb strike and landing is horrendous, regardless of what you do with setup. Okay, it's just, it's just terrible. This car, it bottoms out like crazy, but you need to take it. Um, so it upsets the car quite a bit, being in fifth, 
means you don't kind of wheel spin and lose the rear so much. It allows you to carry more speed as well. So that's why I like it. All right, minimal steering. Let the car run out to the left. Again, if you carry enough speed, you'll be forced onto this left-hand curb. You don't want to run the floor of the car over this part of the curb because then you bottom out and then that's when you have a snap or lose speed. You can feel the car just pick up and it feels like you're not actually driving a car anymore. Um, that's when you know you're bottomed out. So just try to run on the edge. You see I've got the middle of the car just to the right of um, kind of the peak of the curb. Okay, we don't need to run the car all the way out to the right like in a GT. No point, just reduce the distance. Be smooth with the steering as much as you can. Okay, bring the car over to the right. Get it right next to the curb. Do not take the curb. You do not need to take it. It just upsets the car. Same here. Uh, we run a little bit of curb just to help open it up, but don't run the start of the curb. I only run this little bit here. I'm trying to open up this left-hander. So here, again, very similar to turn three, um, turn two, turn three. We want to meet the curb partway round, soft on the brakes, carry speed through this left-hander, um, get the angle towards the end of the curb. See, so I lift a little bit as I turn in. You can see it's, it's, it's a lift a little bit before I hit the brake. It's not just bang on the brakes because I'm trying to just... I want to still carry speed, but I'm trying to position the car, and the car won't turn if I'm flat out. So I can put some weight on the front, get some front grip just by being a bit slower off the throttle. Get the car positioned there, using all of the curb on the entry. Again, a soft brake. It should You should start braking pretty much as soon as you get onto the curb, because if you brake beforehand, then you're going to kind of lock up as you hit the curb, because you've got a change in surface there, and the same when you get off. So we brake on the curb, and then pretty much as you get off the curb, you're going to start dropping the brake. You see I drop the brake pressure as I come off the curb and come out. Very common here, you get lockups, um, or the car bouncing around on that entry. It's all about positioning and the brake, okay? Brake a bit softer. It's easy to brake too hard there and lock up and slide the car. And iRacing really exposes the mistakes there with the tire model. So be careful. Please be very, very careful. You're better off just being softer. Try that first and then start going later. All right, cool. Again, smooth on the steering. You shouldn't have to pull this lock on because you've slid the brakes and then you have to smash all this lock on. Shouldn't have to do that. Look at my steering in the bottom left. Should be nice and smooth. A little bit of lock. Get the car hooked on this entry curb. You don't, sorry, apex curb. Some people might think, oh, I don't want to take it. Like the Align LMP2 used to always be um, not taking the curb here. And some cars it isn't because um, it's faster, because it kind of throws you off. For me in this car, it's faster to take the curb. It feels terrible, but just take it. Um, hook the car up on the curb. You can see I can't get to full throttle. I get some throttle on. As soon as I land, I should be able to pick up full throttle pretty much. Let the steering out. Again, this curb is going to be rough. But it, again, it's not an off track as long as you run, uh, stay on the curb here. Do not run into that gravel trap on the right. Get, try and keep the wheel straight over this little jump you get at the end of the curb. That way it won't land or do anything silly. Okay, be smooth. And by the way, we're fit through this whole section because again, being in high gear just dulls the revs and makes the car less like wheel spinning as snappy. Um, and watch for this grass patch here. You can do all the hard work there, not getting off track. And then if you're lazy, you get off track here. So please remember to turn here, but you can be calm for the rest of it. Be smooth over all those bumps and um, curbs. All right, go over to the left, position nicely, uh, braking. I think it's the second white line. Yep, just before that, very good reference. White line on the road there. Down to fourth, again, a delayed gear change. That's trying to carry speed in. So we've got these two right-handers coming out. The first one, no exit to speak of. Carry speed in. It's all about how much speed can you carry in this uphill, right? Okay, the next corner, think about the exit, but this one, push the entry, carry speed. Okay, braking late, carry speed, fairly firm brake, um, but main thing is just we want to get it into the camber, but with as much speed as possible. So we bleed out very quickly. You see, I'm trailing in a little bit just to try and help the front turn a bit. Um, down a fourth, you should get up to the inside curb there. You don't have to be all over it. It's much better to be wide at the curb than on the curb. So with that in mind, we'd rather be slightly wider because the cat, uh, the banking kind of helps us here. And again, it's a corner where we want to carry speed in. As soon as you can feel it grip, you should be able to be very aggressive on throttle. You can see here, bang, full throttle. I know I've turned the car, full throttle. The cam, uh, sorry, the camera and the banking should just grab you there, help you out. Again, if you're fast enough, if you're really lit up and you're doing a good lap, get forced on this exit curb. Uh, this is a bit of a tricky one because I don't want you running this, um, sorry, this it's an exit curb and an entry curb, this actually. I don't want you running this curb if you're not exiting onto it. What I mean by that is don't exit here to have my left tire on the tarmac and then turn onto the curb and then brake. and Because it, it, you, you can't do that in this space of time. It's just a mess. So either exit and not use the curb or exit and use the curb and then use it for braking. 
if that makes sense. So we should be in a straight line from our exit here until when we break for this next corner. I don't try to get off the curb now. I just choose to break on the curb. If you can, like I said, push yourself out wide enough and you're consistent, it's good to be forcing yourself out here because you're going to make, uh, even though the curbs may be slightly worse braking, carry more speed on this exit, you widen up the entry for the next corner as well. All right, you see, I get the full. Pretty much as I reach this curb anyway, I'm hitting the brakes. Fairly firm brake. Uh, don't try to brake too late here. Uh, I think in other cars, we push the braking a bit later, but in this F4 car, I found it really upsets the car a lot, pushing the braking here. So, okay, braking, turning away well before the end of um, the curbing on the left. It's a bit tricky in terms of references here, in terms of braking markers and stuff. So you're just going to have to gauge it off, again, kind of where you're forced out in the exit, and that's why it's good to be consistent through that previous right. But also looking, look at the motor board. You can see the curb is underneath this gap between the Michelin and the motor board, so that's a good reference there for where you're looking and where you're trying to turn in. All right. Use all this curb, hooks the car around. Again, high gear, third gear. You can try second. I played with it. Second can give you a slightly better exit, but third is better because uh, then you can run this curb. And again, I feel like with the way the car is balanced um, and the way this car drives around here, you want to be turning in a bit early because if you turn in late, it upsets the car quite a bit. So if we get the braking done nice, turn in early, get on this curb, hook it up, get on throttle, lets the car run out in the exit, flat out down the straight now. Again, you can use all that exit curve in the previous corner, but you don't want to be stuck on it because it can kind of stall your momentum a bit. Um, but traction should be fairly easy if you're in third, so it's more about um, being able to roll enough speed over that apex curb. Okay, bring the car to the right-hand side of the track here, preparing for the, uh, the last part of the track, this uphill chicane. All right, so tricky section. Very, very, very tricky. Fortunately for this one, we do have references in the braking of these lines. So braking just after the 100 board and just before, pretty much at this, uh, this first line across the track here. Very hard braking. It's uphill. You'll have a lot of grip. A lot of people think they're going to go deep um, or they struggle to push the entry here. Remember, the hill's helping you a lot. Yeah, you go, you're going downhill here, so you're speeding up, but then it starts going uphill. So please keep that in mind. Uh, brake very hard. I kind of like to point the car this way a bit because we have the curb here. So instead of being perfectly in line with the white line, I point the car out here just to get a slightly wider approach, a bit like bus stop at Spa. And then turn the car in at this point. As soon as you start to turn in, it's about at the, this last white line here, halfway down the uh, entry curb. Just start to decrease the brake pressure down to third gear. So you've got that straight line braking phase where you would have got down to fourth and then kind of bleed off into third. Um, main reason we're doing this is because it starts as, okay, there's, here's this big heavy braking zone, but all of a sudden now we're in this chicane section where we need to carry speed over this left and uh, prepare the car um, so we have a good, good angle of attack for this right-hander as well. So it's quite a tricky corner in that way. Um, so with that in mind, we're trying to get a really good angle here, and I always want you to think about how can I get the car facing more this way? And more towards the left-hand side, kind of where the curb, the way this apex curve turns, is where you want to be facing the car, right? Think of it like that. If you turn in early, okay, so it braking early, and we turn in early, you end up with an angle that's more like that. Um, or if you brake too late, you just miss it and you can't cut across the inside. Also, with track limits here, off track is half the car to the left of the curb. This is the uh, this is pretty much bang on. This is the limit. With all things in IRS, and there is a box somewhere here, but it is a bit vague in terms of visually knowing what to do. I can promise you this lap's legal. Um, unfortunately, just a, you're going to have to practice it to get used to it. So, but that angle is really important. I found if you can break later, if you can get away with breaking slightly later, it always helps you take more of this curb. If you break early, quite often that's where a lot of the off tracks come from. Is you turn in early, you break early, and you end up cutting across here. So keep that in mind. If you can break a little bit later, please do and still make it in. Down a third. Um, get that rotation done nice and early. Carry good speed over here. Throttle. Again, I'm on throttle before I even get to this apex curb. So that gives you an idea. And this is already the exit for this section, which is super important for lap time. Okay, full throttle between the two. Car's a bit loose going over the curb. Try and position the car to the left on the exit here. But as soon as you get out of there, you pretty much got to turn right. There's not enough time. Uh, if you can be to the, the left-hand side of this uh, tarmac strip, that's really important for positioning. Turn in here, try and be smooth on the wheel. 
You see I lift like fractionally. Again, it's one of those corners where, okay, ideally it's flat on a perfect lap, but to be honest, um, you know, if you're pushing the left and you should have the car absolutely on the limit, it should be on the limit of taking this right hand to flat, then it's probably not going to be flat that often. And I've also found if you run through this curb, you get a lot of inside wheel spin because of the open differential in this car. Um, if you know what that means, pretty much the car is just going to wheel spin if you're full throttle through here on its own, the inside wheel. It's not really going to spin you out or anything. It's just not accelerating. It's not putting all the power down properly. Um, and that's worse at higher revs. So I short shift to fourth, actually, when I'm in this little, because it's kind of a rut you go in with this curb, like a little hole in the road. Um, it helps turn the car a lot, as you've seen here, and shorten the distance. But I thought, unfortunately, you get that inside wheel spin. You might be thinking, okay, maybe I can go on the tarmac. It doesn't work. It's, it, you don't gain back. Okay, you get, might get a slightly better drive out of the corner, but you don't gain back what you lose in terms of being able to carry more speed through here um, and rotate the car in this curb. So um, just get on this curb. Short shift to fourth, maybe you lift a tiny bit if you need to. Should be forced all the way out onto this exit curb, straight over the hill. And at the end of a qualifying lap like this, or a push lap, you can shorten the distance a bit more. Although in this car, to be honest, you don't need to run the car out, I found. Just be smooth on the steering. You can easily run the car mid-track, just take less distance like this. Run mid-track, and then just turn it smoothly. You don't need this apex curb, it just bumps and upsets the car. So just don't take it. And let the car out to the exit. And that's a lap at Red Lancer. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And you can also find the Coach Dave Academy Discord with more information about how to get coaching and setups from people like myself in the YouTube video description. My name is Bart, and I'll see you next week. See ya.